It's Cousin5, and welcome back to my channel. And for all my new subscribers, I just want to say thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I cannot go without saying how much I appreciate all the love that I've been getting, all the comments and all the kind words. I'm just so blessed to be in this position, you know, to share what I love to do with y'all and, you know, get the same love back. So it's much appreciated. And I, and I promise y'all it does not go unnoticed. So let's get into all things evil and benign. But if you know that reference, put it in the comments because that lets me know you're a fan like I'm a fan. For this video, I said that I wanted to really just go to a bookstore. And I actually traveled to Atlanta last week. So I said, Psh, it's the perfect time to hit a bookstore, man. What's really funny to me is that I didn't even make it through the airport before I went and started buying books. And I seen this bookstore in the airport and it just caught my attention. I'm like, let me walk in here and see what's up. I had no intentions on buying no books. I really just wanted to go in here and see what it was all about. So I'm walking around looking at all these books. And before you know it, I'm doing what I do best, spending money. <laughs> I go in there and I bought like four books out of that bookstore. And I'm walking out the bookstore and I'm like, there is no way that I've just spent $100 on like four books and I haven't even left the airport I haven't even got to my destination yet y'all I haven't got to my destination yet so I finally make it to Atlanta because that's definitely where I was going I get there raining it's just raining every day like if y'all know Atlanta the, the, the rain gets annoying sometimes it just seems like it's non-stop but I found a good day where it was like 65 degrees sunny I said, man, I'm getting out of here and I'm going to a bookstore. So I just looked up a bookstore and I took off. So the bookstore that I went to is called Virginia Highland Books. Let me tell y'all, this bookstore was amazing. And I don't know if it's because it's like my first real bookstore, like as far as like local bookstores, because I've been to Barnes and Nobles and I don't know about y'all, but it just doesn't do it for me, you know? I get in and I get out. And I really only been to Barnes and Nobles like once or twice, if I'm gonna be completely honest. I went to this bookstore and as soon as I walked in, like even before I walked in, I looked at the sign, I'm just like, oh shit. I was overwhelmed. I'm like, oh, so I walked in and not gonna lie, as soon as I walked in, completely felt out of place. And I started to get uncomfortable because this bookstore was goddamn beautiful. <laughs> it just felt like I shouldn't have been in there. You know what I'm saying? I had, I think I had this jacket on. I had this jacket on with the, the, the matching pants. You know what I'm saying? I had the jacket on, matching pants, a backpack, everything. And actually, this is my, you know what I'm saying? It's my brother brand. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Modest Apparel. So what I said is that I'm not, I don't want to experience this by myself. So what did I do? Pulled out the camera and recorded what I seen so I could bring my family with me. It's like a bookstore family reunion. And if you want to be real, like y'all coming with me. Y'all ain't going nowhere without cousin. Come on, cuz. What are you doing? Truthfully, if I'm going to be a little vulnerable, I wanted to like really vlog this and like show myself doing all the little vlog shit. But I got so much social anxiety. I said that is not happening right now. I'll work on it later. But <laughs> right now, no. So... I really just recorded some clips of like the store. I recorded the, you know, what I was doing in there. I wanted to show y'all how nice this bookstore really was. I don't know if it was just because it's my first bookstore. And I'm pretty sure that there are nicer bookstores than this. But Virginia Highland Books, top notch. I'm going to do a little montage. And yeah, we're going to we gonna, we gonna get right into it. Let's get it. What's up, y'all? This is me just riding the Uber. Not doing too much, just trying to scope the scenery on the way to the bookstore. This right here is me in the bookstore, catching this table full of books. I had to make sure I showed y'all that. This is the uh, shelf that I seen when I first came in. It has some nice tabs to kind of explain who the workers' favorite authors was and things like that. This is me going down into the dungeon of the bookshop and seeing everything else that they have. It was super nice real spacious i like that a lot this is me just kind of reading 
uh, book that I bought actually and just making sure that you know as I'm going around and browsing the books that I'm actually reading them and trying to make sure that it's something that I want to get so that's kind of what I'm just doing right here I'm just minding my business then right here I'm on my way back up and as you can see on every step there's the name of a famous author so I thought this was super cool and I really wanted to catch this on my way out and right here this is me just getting a little bite to eat before I take it back in I got my root beer got a couple of pieces and a little piece of knot this right here is just me enjoying the pizza kind of showing y'all what it looks like and I can tell you what this was some of the best pizza that I think I've ever had probably wouldn't say it's the top but it was definitely up there as you can see I give it a quick two thumbs up and then this is the little pesto pizza that I got as well this was super good and what's cool is that I got this for free so that's pretty much all I did today uh, I went to the bookstore and got some food when I tell y'all that bookstore was fire it was one of the best experiences I've had in a while and that may seem like overly dramatic but I'm being honest it was so peaceful and relaxing and like I said everybody was helpful it was definitely like a super good experience but let's get right into these books and like I said I was at the airport and I didn't even make it all the way to like my terminal before I started buying books so let's get into the books that I got at the airport. And I think this bookstore was called Hudson's. All right, y'all, so let's get into this first book. It is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Now, when I seen this and seen it had two black characters on the front, instant pickup. Saying Valentine's Day just passed. Y'all know I love some romance. And it's Black History Month. You can't beat it. So essentially, this book is about two kids one named brad the other named celine brad is a star football player celine is obsessed with conspiracy theories and they used to be best friends until brad got popular and did celine so now they pretty much hate each other and then celine signs up for this survival class but i guarantee she didn't expect that brad was going to be right next to her in the survival class so now they got to work together to win this grand prize and survive the class and we're going to figure out if them working together is going to bring them together or if too much time has passed and they're going to continue to hate each other. This is going to be a good book for sure. And I can't wait to read it. All right, y'all. So let's get into this next book. And that's The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. I've seen this book in so many videos and so many videos that say this is their 2023 best reads. So I had to grab it. This book basically is about a poor town in Pennsylvania that blacks and Jews coexist. And one day they find a skeleton as they were building this new project development. So now they have to deal with the backlash of that and, you know, where this came from. But while all of that is going on, the state is kind of trying to come and take a black deaf boy from the town to be institutionalized for no reason when there's nothing even wrong with him. So the town just bands together and helps out the black boy. And I guess they figure out, you know, where the skeleton came from. And that kind of unearths some secrets that's been going on in the town. It seems like this book is really just about community, love, coming together and, you know, working towards a common goal. You know, so I'm super excited to read this book. I've heard nothing but good things about it. So we're going we gonna to do good on this one. All right, let's get into this next book, man. This is a book that, again, I've seen all throughout BookTube. And I've really been excited to grab this book because the title is just captivating as hell. And that is Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame. I'm not going to try to read his last name because I don't want to mess it up. But like I said, I've seen this book everywhere and I'm super excited to read this one. This is essentially about two characters who are in the prison system. So in this prison system, though, people who are in there for long periods of time have the chance to volunteer to join the prison's team. So they go around fighting other teams of prisons to gain their freedom. But the catch is they fight to the death. 
So these two characters are like at the top of the food chain when it comes to, you know, this 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 team and this sport. And they get tired of it. They get tired of it and they want to rebel. And I guess they do something so big that it comes back with major consequences on them. So I've heard nothing but good things about this book. And I can't wait to read this one. I tell you what. So this is the last book of my airport reads. But I'll tell you, this author that I'm about to show y'all is an author that I am falling in love with every single day more and more. And that is S.A. Cosby. And this is All the Sinners Bleed. I've been recommended this book because I read Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby and I loved it. I absolutely love that book. So I guarantee, almost guarantee, that I'm going to like this book. And basically, this book is about a sheriff who is the first black sheriff in this town's history, right? So when he becomes sheriff, there is a murder. There was a murder that happened in his town. So now he has to figure out, you know, what happened with this murder. And as he dives deeper into it, a lot of secrets start to come up in this town. So now he has to deal with being the first black sheriff with this murder and now the secrets that are coming out of this town. So he kind of has to, you know, do his thing, and, you know, and, and make everybody know that he's here to stay. So again, S.A. Cosby is an electric, electric writer. So I am super duper excited to read this. This is going to be a good one. All right, y'all. So now we about to move on to the bookstore reads. Them Virginia Highland gems. They need to quote that. They need, they, need to, they need to pay me for that. The Virginia Highland gems. But this first book that we got, I got to stick to my romance. This is just what I do. Y'all starting, starting to understand this about me. But we got Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Emily Henry is an author that has been recommended to me because I do love romance. And as soon as I seen it, I grabbed it. So this book is about Nora Stevens and her sister Libby, who Nora is a literary agent for her sister. So her sister wants to go on vacation. Nora's really usually super uptight and doesn't want to do anything, but she decides to go on this vacation with her sister. So they go to North Carolina for a month where she keeps bumping into this guy named Charlie. Charlie is an agent as well, and they have sort of a rivalry. They always bump in heads. They're super competitive with each other. But on this trip, they keep like, they just keep bumping into each other. So instead of it being more of a rivalry, they start to fall in love. So this just seems like a super romantic, mush love story. You know what I mean? So I want to read this one. It's a little thick, but... We gonna get through it. All right, y'all. So this next book sounds like it's amazingly fire. It is To Have and To Heist by Sarah Desai. Kind of rhymes a little bit. But I grabbed this because when I read it, I was already attached to the book. So essentially this book is about a woman who is just having a bad luck streak. She's lost her job. Her house is flooding. She got school debt. You know what I mean? And then she finds out that her best friend was accused of embezzlement of this like multi-million dollar diamond necklace. So she just going through it. You know what I mean? But out of nowhere, randomly, this dude comes and says that he can help her get the necklace back. So I guess throughout the book, they put together this ragtag team that they got to turn into these elite heistmen. You know what I mean? These elite robbers to get the necklace back. And try and get everything fixed. But as they're doing that, the random man and the main character start to fall in love. So this is really, so was it really random? We gonna figure it out. I guarantee it. <laughs> All right, I told y'all that I was on a romance binge and that's still holding true. This book is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This book was super interesting to me because when I read it, I was thoroughly confused. So it says that Florence, who is the main character, is a ghostwriter for a popular romance author. But 
she just got broken up with. So now she doesn't believe in love no more. So how are you going to be a ghostwriter for romance if you don't believe in romance? So now she has to go tell her editor that she she can't meet the deadline. But her editor tells her that she has to meet the deadline. You have to do this. Like, we need this. So after that, she gets a call that her dad died just to put it frankly, her dad died. So now she has to go back to a town that she doesn't want to go back to. She goes there, goes to the funeral parlor to get all the arrangements together. And out of nowhere, she sees the ghost of her editor. So now she's confused. Her editor ghost is confused on why he's there. So now they have to figure out what's going on. And she figures out, I guess she figures out like how to love again. And that love is real. And I'm assuming she probably meets the deadline or something like that. So this seems like a very interesting book. Like I said, I was confused, but I'm determined to figure out what's going on and why we got so many ghosts around here. <laughs> so yeah, this is going to be a good read for sure. My romance binge is coming to an end, but I promise we're ending on a banger. This is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Never heard nothing about this author or this book, but when I seen this cover, I got a little hot and bothered. I love me some black love, man. I told y'all this shit is, I'm passionate about it. You know what I'm saying? But we gotta, I gotta read this for this last romance book. Y'all gotta really feel what's going on. So it says, Eva Mercy is a single mom and best-selling erotica writer who is feeling pressed from all sides. Shane Hall is a reclusive award-winning novelist who, to everyone's surprise, shows up in New York, which I'm assuming is where Eva is at. When Shane and Eva meet unexpectedly, unexpectedly at a black literary event, sparks fly. But no one knows that in 15 years earlier, teenage Eva and Shane spent one crazy torrid week madly in love and have been secretly writing to each other in their books ever since. Over the next seven days amidst the steamy Brooklyn summer, Eva and Shane reconnect, but Eva was wary of the man who broke her heart. Before Shane disappears again, she needs a few questions answered. Come on, y'all, that sound good as hell. I really can't wait to read this book. And this is raw emotion coming out of me right now because I just love shit like this. Like I promise you I do. And I tell y'all, when I read this, y'all gonna be the first ones to know exactly how I feel. I promise you. <laughs> Say, man, since we out of the romance phase, I had to come straight to a classic that I've been recommended nonstop, and that is George Orwell's 1984. I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about this book, and from reading the synopsis, I can tell you that I am going to love it. This book is about a man who's going through a totalitarian type world right now, and Everything is watched. Everything is controlled by the government. And he going against the grain. He going against the grain and really trying to uproot everything. He becomes an enemy of the state. He becomes an enemy of Big Brother. You know, everybody watching. Like, the overall hierarchy. You know what I mean? So, I think that this is going to be an amazing book. Like I said, I've heard nothing but good things about it. And I really can't wait to read it. Cause I love when people go against the grain. Big ups to you, my boy. We gon' we gonna see what you're talking about. All right, so now we're gonna switch to a different direction real quick and talk about Patriarchy Blues by Frederick Joseph. This is a little different because this is more of an essay style writing. But when I seen it and I read it, I had to grab it because essentially he's talking about what it means to be a man today you know, and talking about toxic masculinity. And the thing is that, you know, men go through and men struggle with, with just being a man, you know, and talking about how we can get better at it, how we can, you know, train ourselves and, you know, help ourselves through some of the things that we struggle with. So I really just was attracted to this book from the get go, you know, cause this is, I'm a black man. I struggle with a lot of things. So this is something that's definitely going to help me. And it's going to be a good read. All right, now, y'all. Y'all know how I feel about some Toni Morrison. This is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I love her. She is an amazing author. 
and I've heard nothing but good things about this book. So this book is about a little girl named Pecola Breedlove. And she's a young black girl who has been getting mocked and bullied by other kids because she has dark skin, brown eyes, and dark curly hair. Brown skin, brown eyes, dark coarse hair. I feel it. But the thing about this book is that she wants to be white, essentially. She wants blonde hair, blue eyes. And as she gets older, she realizes that's not going to happen. And she continues to get bullied and continues to go through things. So her life is a spiral out of control. But this book is really just about conformity and wanting to be like somebody else. I think that she just speaks to so many themes in her books that I know I'm going to fall in love with this from the first couple pages. I appreciate y'all who recommended this. I really cannot wait to dive into this. All right, all right, all right. Let's get into this next one, man. This is Why Fathers Cry at Night by Kwame Alexander. And I picked this book up because one, the title is fascinating. Two, because when I read it, this is about a man going over the trials and tribulations that he's had to face growing up with his parents, you know, him getting older, getting into his own relationships and those not going the way he's supposed to, his kids, and really just talking about the stigma of men with trauma and men crying and, you know, being vulnerable. Because, you know, as men, we're always told to suck it up or I don't know if y'all ever been told to cry in the dark because people can't see that you're crying. And that's really what this title speaks to. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. So when I tell you that this is going to be one of the first books that I read, I promise you that because I'm passionate about stuff like this. Like I wouldn't be able to be vulnerable with y'all if it wasn't for books like this. So if you feel the same way, go ahead and grab it because I'm going to tell you I'm about to read it. All right, y'all. So I saved the good one for last. And I promise this is a funny one. And I swear this has to be a movie. I promise you, I feel like I've seen this in a movie. But this is Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. When I seen this, the cover caught me off guard, like instantly. But when I turned it around and read it, oh my, I was on the flow. This book is about four elderly ladies who have worked for the museum, which is an elite network of assassins. So these old ladies used to be assassins and they worked for this company for 40 years. So now the company feels that they've been, they're, they're too old. They tacked this old school and everything. So the company sends them on an all expenses paid vacation. So they ecstatic, but as they on vacation, they realize that an assassin is trying to take them out. And they think to themselves, the only way that they could be taken out is if the company is trying to take them out. So now they got to work together to show the museum that these old ladies can still get down and them old tactics still work like brand new. <laughs> so I'm excited to read this one. I know it's going to be funny. I know it's going to be super interesting, thriller wise. Like this is going to be a good one. But yeah, that's that's the end of my little bookstore book haul <laughs> and i just want to give a shout out to virginia highlands for being so nice and having a you know welcoming energy and everything like that and i want to shout out to y'all for just continuing to watch my videos and i want y'all to know that i appreciate it wait 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 wait! i forgot to show y'all look at this bookmark i got this is a scarf i've never seen this before this is fire then i got another one that says i have no shelf control that's corny, but I love it. <laughs> but I just want to say thank y'all, man, for watching. I appreciate all the love that I've been getting. And I promise you, it does not go unnoticed. I'll be reading all those comments. I ask that y'all just comment, like, and subscribe. Because Cuzzo will be coming with more videos soon. So y'all stay tuned. Peace.